Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're talking about Soviet battleship changes, changes to the Yukikaze, Indomitable, and Georgia, AA changes in Update 8.2, and then the Yamato-class battleship Unique Camouflage. But first, let's talk about the Soviet battleship line, because I have had extensive play with them. I've really enjoyed them. However, Wargaming seems fit to make massive change, so be prepared. There's a lot to discuss. Let's get to it. So first off, we've got the Tier 3, the Suvorov. This one had its deck armor lowered from 38 to 16. It basically had 38 millimeters of deck armor all around. Now it only has 16. This allows for high explosive and armor piercing, for that matter, to punish it more freely. It's a good change. The Tier 3 was pretty broken. The Tier 5 had more extensive armor adjustments, and it lowered a lot of numbers from 38 millimeters to 19, the four and a half deck armor. The aft inside armor was lowered from 125 to 75 millimeters. Lowering the armor is obviously going to make them more vulnerable because they have less armor. It should allow for more punishment potential. I don't necessarily feel like these changes are unfair at this point. However, there's more changes to come. Uh, Ismail, the tier six, this will be getting a increase in armor. Its casemate belt armor is going from 25 millimeters all the way up to 100 millimeters. And the reason for this is they want her to be fully utilized in closer, more aggressive engagements and less so in a range engagement. I, I understand that. This ship in particular did feel like it lacked some armor for particular angling that you would try and minimize. But let's keep going. Accuracy changes. The Tier 3 and the Tier 4 are receiving Sigma nerfs. The Tier 3 is getting a Sigma nerf from 1.7 to 1.5, and then the Tier 4 is getting a Sigma nerf from 1.7 to 1.4. They are still keeping the curve that the Soviet battleships have, that unique curve where it gets more accurate much quicker. However, the Sigma is going to take away its consistency. So... It's going to have shells that will be super accurate, but then it'll have other shells that will be so inaccurate that why would you even fire? I, I don't necessarily know that this is the change I would have done. I may have adjusted the curve for these two in particular and left their sigma. You know, maybe they would have to get within eight kilometers or seven kilometers to really see the same accuracy impact as like a 10 or a 12 kilometer at a higher tier. However, this will effectively make them feel more balanced compared to the competition battleships, and I'm all for that. I have no problem with that because they were way above in that field. So it, it's a good change. It's still a healthy change. It's just a different style of change than I would. It's probably just easier that they adjust the Sigma rather than adjusting the curve because I think the curve probably applies across all the Soviet battleships that they're implementing. They would have to make an own unique curve for early tier. That's my understanding. Maximum firing range changes, aka nerfs. The tier 3 maximum firing range with stock guns is going from 13.3 to 11.4. The tier 4 is going from 14.1 to 12.3. The tier 5, 15.1 to 14.5. The tier 7, 16.1 to 15.8. And then Vladivostok, the tier 8 maximum fire range from the stock guns, is going from 17.2 to 16.3. Now, all of these changes, I don't think they're unfair because the range is the weakness of the Soviet battleships. It's just going to further enhance the urgency to get the hell away from stock gun range. All this really does is solidify my suggestion that I've done on stream. Save your free XP and always buy the upgraded gun range because the ranges that they're asking us to work with stock, it's ridiculous. A tier eight stock 16.3. I've tested the stock regular Vladivostok at 17.2 and it still felt shallow. So 16.3, it's gonna feel really shallow. It's an important weakness that can be co uh, concealed by the upgrade, but people need to understand it's a, it's a really important upgrade on the Soviet battleships now that they're even more 
uh, nerfing the range of the default. Uh, the tier four is receiving a concealment nerf. 10.6 was the base concealment, and I think I got it down to like 9.3 in my video, and obviously that was ridiculous. I had, I think, seven or eight kilometers of firing range. Um, it's not going to be that good. It's going from 10.2 uh, to 13.2, a very significant nerf. Same with firing from smoke, and same from the detectability by air. I think it's a fair nerf, but the tier four has received a concealment nerf a maximum range nerf, a, can, a accuracy nerf, a, I didn't receive an armor nerf, but it still has received three nerfs already, all in this one patch. That might be a little bit too many changes. We'll see. Uh, the tier five, the engine has been reduced from 29.5 knots to 26.6. Honestly, the ship was hilarious. It was so much faster than every other ship in this bracket. It needed to be nerfed in its speed. It, it was, it had better accuracy, it had better speed, better armor. It had everything except AA, honestly, on its competition. The Synop, the Synop has had its researchable engine removed. The maximum speed with the stock engine is and was 27 knots, and that will be the Synop's maximum speed. Once again, another nerf. Uh, the turret traverse. This is an interesting change because I kind of, I don't know. I, I just want to go through them. The tier three, the turning angles for the near side turrets are changed. Now they can turn to face the opposite side. So the tier three Soviet battleship had sort of a, a, uh, um, it had a weird positioning of the guns where they could only basically rotate on the outside and they could never rotate in. There was like sort of geometry blocking. So you never had that full fire broadside. Because they've made this adjustment, I think that you can now use all of your guns and they won't have the weaknesses similar to maybe the Wyoming or the Arkansas Beta, where the guns, that number three gun turret, can't really engage unless perfectly broadside. This should allow for a little bit more, you know, maybe effective accuracy feeling. I'm, I'm pretty cool with that change. The Synop turret traverse has been just obliterated. It is no longer a 30 second turret traverse. It is a uh, 60 second turret traverse. But I believe it's a 60 second turret traverse. Huge nerf, gonna require expert marksman. The Vladivostok also will not get 30 second turret traverse by default. It's getting a much slower turret traverse. I think it's in the 40s and the 45s. Uh, it's borderline expert marksman take. That's okay, honestly, it was a bonus skill, so I think it's it's a fine nerf. There, there's nothing really that big of a deal there. Uh, another interesting change that they've done, um, they are removing completely surveillance radar from the Soviet battleship line. They feel like the effectiveness was very situational and it didn't really suit the branch as a whole. Now, I don't know what this means for something like the Kreml, or I guess it's the Kremlin now, um, because it doesn't really have any other choice. It's effectively removing an option from the Kremlin, so I have to see it in game. There is a mention that the fighter consumable parameter is gonna be standardized, so I appreciate that, but on something like the Kremlin, there's nothing really to use other than surveillance radar. And they also make a distinction that the changes to balance overall performance, they want to keep the distinction, the, the unique features, the good accuracy at lower range, and the general effectiveness in close combat. They want that to be the trait of the Soviet branch. And that's what I want it to be as well. Now, one thing that I would like to mention, this is a significant adjustment. We will need to test this further. So that is going to delay the Soviet battleship release, in my opinion, by an, at least one patch. But it should mean that the line itself should be better suited, better balanced for the game. And I think as a whole, the game will benefit from delaying it a little bit more. I don't really agree with surveillance radar being removed. It wasn't as situational as they're suggesting. And that just is due to the player's playability. Now I will admit, it was very rare that I would ever use all of my surveillance radar consumables, but pretty consistently, I always found one or two windows where I could benefit myself and the team. It feels very weird to take away the team benefit on this skill. I mean, you 
basically could forcibly keep a battleship spotted for 40, 50, and 60 seconds for your team. That's pretty good for everyone to take advantage of, but it's not going to be the case anymore. So it's changing the way they play significantly enough that I do believe a delay is in their best interest. So we'll check out all these changes. Tell me what you think on them. Uh, overall, I feel like early tier got some nerfs that they deserved. Late tier did get a nerf too. And uh, we'll see if they compensate back for those adjustments. Yukikaze, Indomitable, and Georgia all are being adjusted. They are uh, equipping the engine boost consumable on the Yukikaze. Thank God. It was the DD that I tested with Just Smoke. It was awful with Just Smoke. It has 8 km range torpedoes. Speed boost works very well with shallow range. I don't know why this wasn't attached to it before, but it is now. The Indomitable... They are changing the way the patrol fighter can control. They're increasing the number for all the aircraft. You only have two squadrons. So normally you would have six, or actually, normally you would have nine patrols. But because of the Indomitable's two squadron limit, you only had six. So uh, you were losing out on a significant amount of anti-fighter patrolling. With four, it's up to eight. It's a much closer number to nine than six ever was. So fair change. The attack squadron is increasing in the number. The bomber squadron is increasing in the number. They're going to be getting the same exact bombs that are used on Implacable. Overall, these are buffs to the Indomitable. The overall feeling of the ship was really lacking the last time I tested it. Hopefully, these changes will be more positive. And then Georgia, they are adjusting the style of accuracy. It's being closer designed with something like the Vanguard and less so with something like, oh, I don't know, like uh, Yamato or something like that. It does mean that they reduced the gun accuracy, they reduced the accuracy of the secondary guns as compensation. Uh, I don't know how close, how many times I would get close with my Georgia. I haven't played the ship though. We'll see. Uh, AA changes in update 8.2. Now, these are the changes that I mentioned, the non-linear uh, continuous AA DPS. They are changing it to where, depending on the type of ships and as they group up, they will have a slightly different percentage of effective AA DPS zones. And it's going to be a combination of the ships in a reduced percentage. Now, obviously... Normally, it would be 200%, 300%, 400%, 500%, 600%. All they wanted to do is make sure that the efficiency is better than one, but worse than the next step up. So, two ships have better AA efficiency than one ship, but less so than three. And that overall effectiveness is less than it would have been, but it is still noticeable. Like, you're not going to feel like you're cheated out on your AA effectiveness. It's just that... When there's two or three ships, the continuous DPS isn't going to be so astronomical that aircraft carriers don't even attempt an attack. You need carriers to feel like they have a chance, and with the old system, they didn't. This system, there might be a higher window where the carrier is willing to make a little bit more of a vulnerable attack, and you might re be rewarded for that. So I think overall, this is a very good change. Um, I don't know that carriers necessarily need to gain any more power at super high tier, but, you know, tier 4, tier 6, tier 8, yeah, uh, they absolutely could benefit from it. And then finally, we've got a brand new Japanese battleship camouflage Yamato. Um, the Yamato is being, I guess, skinned by the same guy that did the Roma, if you're familiar with the beer can. Um, on this, the range finding have extended the vastly they look like i don't know they look like silly little ears or i don't know like a a, 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 a yard sprinkler or something it, they're very big so very interesting i overall i think the camouflage looks pretty cool um but i'm i'm more excited to see the new model in game that is the most exciting feature of this it's allowed them to do more skins, yes, absolutely, but having the model up-to-date in-game, super exciting. So overall, 
a significant adjustment to the way we perceive the Soviet battleships. Less so towards the AA changes and then obviously all the test ships. You guys haven't had a chance to play them anyway, so. Positive on the test ships. Those are very good changes. For the health of the Soviet battleship line, I am also on board with those adjustments. Maybe not the surveillance radar one, but everything else, yeah. It needed to happen. The armor was too extreme. The accuracy at early tier, all that stuff. A, I, I like the adjustment. I want to feel like I have a chance attacking a target. But high explosive bombs on the Midway and the Lexington are a problem. And I expect they'll be addressed. Just not right now. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Leave in the comments what you think of the changes. I absolutely would love to hear what you think. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you next time.